Bienvenidos a WrestleMania con el luchador. El protector del mundo, señor. El padre del rey misterio 6199. Brian Stoddard. What's up, everybody? Welcome to some Brian WrestleMania. As far as opening hand goes, yeah, I guess we're going to keep on this one. We got Clifftop Retreat, Mountain, Disenchant. Maybe we can pop one of our opponent's artifacts, maybe their ramp stuff. But the main thing is that we do have Boros versus Boros. <laughs> <laughs> it's gonna lead off the cliff top to cheat, and I'm gonna go and pass the turn. All right, I do apologize if you're new to the channel and you're trying to figure out what is going on. Um, Brianna is one of my original decks that I did on my channel, and uh, that intro it started out as like we're throwing creatures, so they just evolve some sort of arm activity. And so, what I would do is I would say that it's Brian. Um, I hope you're ready. For, I would always start the video with I hope you're ready for arm day with Brian. Like, let's go to the gym, let's work out, and then that turned into. Uh, like a wrestling, let's make Brianna a wrestler. Um, let's go and get down the lightning greaves. I like that. Get down the lightning greaves. But yeah, the, so it went from arm day at the gym with Brianna to like a mucha lucha intro into just what it, what it is now, which is just insanity. And, and I love it. And I don't have any other intros like it, but it's always a lot of fun to do. And uh, my cat typically runs out of the room whenever I do this because usually she's asleep. And uh, I just start yelling and <laughs> she gets a little bit crazy, but the funny thing is, I practice those intros while I'm driving, so if you'd like to imagine me driving down the road and doing a Breon uh, WrestleMania intro while I'm driving, talking to myself, that's uh, your funny mental thought for the day. All right, we're playing Breon WrestleMania, uh, WrestleMania, Mr. Lucha. Opponent's going to go for Vandal Blast, that's fine. Uh, Mucho Lucha in El Stadio. Uh, Breon's four mana, lifelink, one red mana, sacrifice another creature other than Breon, deals damage equal to the sacrifice of creature power to target player. Hopefully we hit the land drop for the turn. Let's keep our fingers crossed. Turn to dust. Okay, that's not too bad. Get the swift foot boots down. In true Boros fashion, we are just squaring up. Two lanes against each other. No card advantage going at all. Playing against Tajik, Blade of Legion. I'm pretty sure that's how you say it. Uh, if not, then we're just going to roll through the stop sign. Uh, Indestructible Battalion. Uh, whenever Tajik, Blade of the Legion, um, at least two of those creatures attack, Tajik gets plus five, plus five until end of turn. And if you look really closely... Let me pop it out real quick. Oh, it doesn't go any bigger. That's a bummer. Uh, I always, always want to do that for comedic value, but it, it won't work. Anyway, Tajik has Indestructible, and that's something that we need to remember because I always forget. Like, I'll get wrapped up in commentary and be like, all right, we'll go for Path, or not, well, Path would work, but um, have some sort of destruction spell, and it ends up not working because uh, I forget that Tajik has Indestructible. So he does. And um, last time I played against Tajik, um, there was a discussion about his sword, and I, I was talking about how that would not be a good sword, I always thought it was kind of goofy looking, but then somebody, I forget their name, but they said that um, they do like medieval stuff, and they they gave me the reason as to why that sword is wavy, and I can't remember the reason now, but I remember reading it and thinking that was really neat, so shout out to you if you're still watching this video. All right, Putt is going to get down to Jeek, and then hopefully we're going to get the lane drop going. I draw the City of Brass, that is better than nothing. Let's go to get that down, and then we're going to go ahead and pass the turn. So this deck doesn't really need a lot of mana to operate on. Uh, one of the main things that we do need is red mana to go for Breon activations. So uh, what we can do is at least we do have Wrath of God. So once we get to that magical four number as far as our mana goes, we can go for a little bit of reset. Our opponent doesn't have any artifacts out there. Um, once we get the fourth land drop, also puts us in line for Hedron Archive. So once we hit that land, we'll be kind of good to go. Uh, we also get in the spot so we can get down Wormcoil Engine, uh, go for Wrath of God, and still end up with some tokens to kind of go from there. Or if we want to, get those arms... Uh, Go on to Breon, WrestleMania, Mr. Lucha. Get that going from there. Put swings in for two. Two command. Oh, wonderful. Let's go and get the planes down. Yeah, I think I like going for Hedron Archive. I think that sounds pretty good. That'll kind of make up for us not making the land drops, at least hopefully. Uh, let's tap the City of Brass down. Tap the Eclipse Top Retreat. Ugh, City of Brass on Magic. There we go. All right. It always, like, you tap it down. It's like, uh-uh. You gotta get one damage to you. But it's always kind of, it's like weird putting it on the stack or something like that. Uh, let's get the Hedron Archive down, and then we're going to go ahead and pass the turn. So now that does put us at six total mana. So instead of going for Breon next turn, I think I think I like going for Wormcoil Engine. We can tap out for that. If our opponent has some sort of one mana removal, whether it be Path or um, Source of Plowshare, they can definitely go for that. Uh, we'll take the life, or we'll take the land uh, either way. And we still have Return to Desk go for it. Now we do have Territorial Hellkite in the hand. Flying in haste to the beginning of combat on your turn. Choose an opponent at random uh, that didn't attack last combat. Um... That player, if you don't choose, well, excuse me, at the beginning of combat of your turn, choose an opponent at random, which is always going to be our opponent, um, that didn't attack. Long. Okay, so basically we don't attack with it one time. Uh, the main thing that we do have Territorial Hellkite in here for, um, oh, Parallax Wave. Blew. 
Jeweled Amulet, okay. And then remove a fade counter, exile target creature. Okay, that's not too bad. We, we can make that. We don't really have any creatures out there right now, and that really does kind of keep us off going for that. But with Return to Dust, we can actually blast both of those during our main phase, and we'll be okay. I'm just used to playing against Parallax Wave where... We're having a real heavy creature deck, and it's just like they can keep bouncing it. I think with like usually it's Brago, I think. Yeah, Brago keep. Oh, it's just like ugh. <laughs> my brain shuts down. But it's just sometimes where I see certain commander cards, my brain just shuts down. I'm like, oh, okay, I might. We good. Let's go get the planes down. Let's go for that return to dust. Yeah, we're, we're sitting at four commander damage. Not really anything pressing right now. That's gonna be one, two, three off the uh, two off the Hedron Archive. Still leaves us online for disenchant if we need to do something with that. And then we're going to pass the turn to our opponent. Um, once, if they've got mana tithe, um, so be it. But we've got mana for it. Oh, oh, man. I was trying to record, I think, Gonzi the other day. And uh, I didn't post a video because it's uh, it was a little bit of a shorter video. But um, I was going to get down the Whispering one, Shouldred. I always butcher her name. You know, I was going to get her down. It was going to work perfectly. The, the, the game was going to switch over into our favor. Uh, we got down a good board wipe. And I can just, like, windmill slam, tap that mana, hold the M button, hotkey, get that mana tapped as quickly as possible. And the next thing you know, I see my opponent tap one white mana. I'm like, uh-uh, no, get, get that mana tied back. You don't, uh-uh. And the next thing you know, it's just mana tied. And I was like, ah. Oh. I don't know. I was just trying to think if there's any other more magic card like in the history of magic other than Scavenging Goose because that's a given that has just, when you see that one white mana tap, your brain just immediately just goes into like all hands on deck mode. Like, oh no, is that mana tied? Do you have it? <laughs> it's just, I don't know. It just feels good getting blown out by mana tied sometimes. All right, John the Command Tower. I'm going to go for Breon. So right now we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. We have eight total mana. Um... Yeah, let's go for Breon. I like that. We can hopefully we can stick Breon and then go for the Swiftfoot Boots. You know, they might have some removal or something. They're sitting at five cards in hand and they're not really doing much. So we'll see what uh, the reason for that is. But at least we're kind of going to put the Swiftfoot Boots on there, see if it's good. Okay, opponent's going to be tapping out. Looks like one, two, three. Fateful Showdown. Deals damage to target control equal to the number of cards in your hand. All right. Interesting card with that. But yeah, it looks like they're going to get it. We can't uh, equip it in response to that. No, it's going to take Breon. Breon gets thrown out of the ring. <laughs> Fateful showdown. Knocks him out of the ring. All right, so Breon gets sent back to the command zone. And then uh, they have to discard the hands in your hand, draw that many cards. So they got rid of Aus, Ugin. Oh, okay, yeah. That kind of makes sense while they're just sitting with some weird stuff. I guess you could use that in the red-white deck as a way to uh, a little bit of spot removal. Yeah, I mean, it worked in our case, so... May have to try that out instead of using a deck that is just 100% all just like wheels effects like that. Let's get Breon pop back up. There we go. Uh, but yeah, it feels good to do Breon WrestleMania. In fact, it's it's been a long time, um, long time since I've got Breon going. It feels good to get him going, and I'm trying to work on being better about doing some of my old commander decks. Um, like I enjoy playing these, and you know there'd be some sets like every time a new set comes out, if you want to see a little bit behind the scenes as far as what I do on my channel, when a new set comes out, I have an Excel sheet. It has like basically, I think I'm like 50 commander decks. I would put it at probably about 40 are the core decks that I play. And so opponent goes for Light and Shadow. All right. Now we do have Disenchant. We're definitely going to go for that Disenchant. So I'm going to wait for them to equip onto that. And then we can use that mana if they don't equip it on there. But um, but yeah, so I have probably around 40 commander decks that are my main um, decks that I play the most. And, you know, stuff like Carry Zeb, that's included in the 60. But um, I hadn't played Carry Zeb in a long time and it needs a lot of updating. Um, do we want to go for Disenchant to see if we can't kind of force our opponent to... They didn't equip it on there. Yeah, we're going to go for that. I'm okay with that. Let's tap the Command Tower down. And let's see what we draw into. Draw into Windswept Heat. Let's go and get the Windswept Heat down. Yeah, I guess let's go ahead and force... Worm Coiled Engine? Then next time we go for the Breon activation. Yeah, let's going to do that. It's going to be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Tap for 1, 2... There we go. Get down, Worm Coil Engine. Uh, we'll still go ahead and equip the Swiftfoot Boots on there. That will at least be able to swing in. Um, if our opponent wants to keep swinging in there at 8 total commander... Talk about a red-white match. We're looking at 8 commander damage on turn 9. Uh, it's going to get the Swiftfoot Boots on there. <laughs> Ugh. But yeah, it's funny because Breon's the only deck that I don't really... Don't really... Uh, it's the only red-white deck that I really have on the channel. All right, so we're going to have Oblation. We'll be able to draw two cards off that, which we will welcome. Hijack, and then <laughs> drop back into Wormcoil Engine. Puts it 
into his art library then try... <laughs> I don't well see okay we'll go and pass the turn so apparently like there's this like bug on magic online that if you scry something or something like it shuffles back in it puts it on top of the library and we're 83 cards in the library maybe we drew into worm coil engine I don't know but sometimes there's just some funny stuff that happens like that so I don't know we'll see Let's get that popped up. But uh, but yeah, the main thing is we drew into Hijack. And unfortunately, our opponent doesn't have any big creatures out there. So we're going to be using our creatures to really get some Breon WrestleMania going. So we'll see what we can do with that. But we're finally new. We're pretty much kind of far ahead on mana. The opponent's sitting at seven total mana. We've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. We got nine total mana. And then we've got a board wipe to kind of back up on. So hopefully, if they get some big creature out there, we'll kind of. I'm really kind of confused as to what our opponent's deck is. We're seeing a lot of. Um, you know, usually you would have a lot of creatures on the battlefield. We're seeing some pretty good, some random, pretty good removal stuff. You know, we got dust, dust Bowl in there and different stuff like that. So, who knows? We'll get down the Territorial Hellkite. That'll be a good way to kind of check for some more spot removal uh, on our opponent. So, let's go and get that, uh, let's get that going. Let's go and crack the Windswept Heat. That way we don't draw into it. <laughs> but yeah, we drew back. I don't, I don't want to get down Worm Coil Engine just yet because I, don't, I mean, I'm not saying our opponent would scoop to that. But sometimes when you uh, shuffle something away and you draw back into it, uh, that'll get some scoops from your. I'm not saying our opponent would do that, but sometimes that does happen. And so uh, I don't know. All right, John the Stone Quarry. Let's go ahead and get down the Territorial Hellkai. We'll, we'll wait a turn on that one. Maybe they. Sometimes this is where you know I'd like to get down Worm Coil Engine, but sometimes little stuff like that happens to where. Uh, you, um, I don't want to lose a good video. We got a good match going so far. All right, let's go to get the Swiftfoot Boots onto Territorial Hellkite and let's see if this draws out any sort of answer from our opponent. I guess the only really sort of answer we haven't seen from our opponent is something about Chaos Warp, so that's something that we could be watching out for. Okay, opponent does not. Let's go and push in for six. It's going to put our opponent down to 24. We're going to choose our opponent at random because it's the only opponent out there. Let's go and swing in at them. That's going to be six coming across. And then, yeah, we're going to pass the turn. We'll go for Breon next turn and get down the, uh, get the Swiftfoot boots on there and get the action going. But yeah, as far as the new Breon overlay, hope you like it. Um, it was pretty much kind of like the old overlay. I touched it up a little bit, but I did add the, um, kind of going for the Randy Macho Man Savage kind of look to that. And oh yeah, as far as the intro goes at the beginning, if you don't speak Spanish, it's always, um, welcome to WrestleMania with Breon, the protector of the world. Um, Mr. The father of Rey Mysterio 619. That was today's uh, intro. So if you don't know Spanish, that's what it was. <laughs> oh, it's, but it's, oh man, it's just, I love coming up with those intros. It's, <laughs> it's a lot of fun. All right, so you're drawn to, drawn to Mountain. Um, let's go ahead and get this, let's get the Mountain down. We're not going to be able to swing you with that. Let's go for Breon. It's going to be one, two, three, four. Tap out for red and tap out for one more. Let's go ahead and get down the Swiftfoot Boots onto Breon. If we're just going to get into this weird holding pattern, um, I'm A-OK -okay with just sitting going for something like this. All right. And actually, let's go ahead and do this. Let's just go ahead and pass the turn. Uh, we have Breon online right now. We actually have Hijack. So f next turn, we can actually hijack our opponent's commander and um, get that plus bonus. And then we can swing in and kind of go from there. We'll have a way to untap it, but at least we'll be able to get in some extra damage. And we'll kind of see what's... Yeah, I, I think I like that. Let me make sure we're looking at that right. All right, so next turn, we go for hijack on our opponent's commander. I doubt they're going to have an answer for hijack. So we get that. We'll be able to swing in with... Um, when that swings in and at least two other creatures. So we would have to swing in Breon. That's going to be 7, 13... Uh, that'll be 17 coming across next turn. And then the following turn, we go for a Territorial Hellkite activation for the win. I think that would be good. No, they'll be right at 23, but we can still go for more coins. Yeah, I, th I think I kind of like that. That's a pretty big swing in our opponent. So uh, we're going to go and force that instead of going for Breon right now. We're going to get that extra value going. And plus, we can also throw a Tajik, too. So that's uh, it's always a lot of fun. <laughs> Throwing your commander. Here you go. Here's your commander back. <laughs> Not exactly how you left it, but... Uh, We'll get it done. Draw to Blistering Fire. Oh, this is going to be a nice little turn. Okay. Do we have enough red mana? That's going to be five total red. That's going to be one, two, three, four. Yeah, we've got enough. Let's go get the Stone Quarry down. Um, maybe. Might be able to do it in this turn. Let's go. Um, choosing our opponent's creature. It's going to be double red. Tap the Hedron Archive. The main thing is we need to leave up. Um, yeah, we do have enough. We have one more red activation to go for Breon. So we're going to hijack Tajik. Gain control of it. And then uh, we'll be online for Blistering Fire Cat. And that might be lethal. Well, we'll see exactly what our opponent has to kind of show for it. But this is the fun thing about playing Breon is you just kind of sit back 
and you just get a gain control spell. And like you know, our opponent's pausing right now, trying to figure out what they want to do, but they may not have an answer for it. But um, I mean, there's some pretty explosive turns where you just gain control of your opponent's commander. All right, opponent's going to go for Field of Ruin in response to that. Let's go ahead and add red mana. We'll float that red mana. And we'll be able to search your library for a basic land card. And we'll actually be able to get another four, I mean, another mountain too. So we'll be good. Let's go ahead and grab that mountain. Comes into play. It's so actually getting a little bit ahead on mana on that one. Okay, the mountain comes into play. Um, we're going to go for hijack on Tajik. All right, we gain control of it. Let's go ahead and go for that blistering fire cat. Let's go ahead and cast it. It's going to be one, two, three. One more red, one more red. You know, blistering fire cat. And so we're going to, it's going to be 14. This is going to be 20. And I think that's actually going to be lethal right there. Let's see. See if that's enough. It's a very, you know, it's always fun to throw creatures at our opponent, but if you can get a lethal board state like this, yeah, I like it. So as long as we can get to the beginning, um, all right, we're going to choose our opponent at random. We're going to be able to swing with the Territorial Health Kite because we didn't technically attack him last turn. Uh, but yeah, once we get that attack trigger, we'll be able to throw that creature over there. All right, let's go ahead and push in, or at least the following turn. Attack with all creatures. Yeah, because that's going to be eight. And at least two other creature attacks. So that's going to be seven. That's going to be 13. 17, 24. Yeah, that should be yeah, that should be lethal right there. So we're gonna push in on this one. We're not gonna be able to go for excuse me, not be able to go for Breon activation, but at least we'll get that added bonus. Volcanic Fallout can't be countered, deals two damage to each creature and each player. That's okay. We're gonna lose, <laughs> but Tajik is indestructible. We'll still get that additional bonus. Uh, we're gonna lose the blistering fire cat though, unfortunately. All right, <laughs> I'll take that. All right, so we're going to be swinging in. That's going to be a 13, 17 coming across. We'll get some lifelink coming on a Breon too, which is always good. And then we, unfortunately, we cannot get down Worm Coil Engine. So put him down to five. And then, yeah, anything else? No, we're going to go and pass the turn. Yeah, we're going to kick it over to them. Now, they're sitting at five. So simply them just passing the turn with an open Breon will allow us to uh, kind of go for that activation. And if Breon does, something does happen to Breon, let's say they blast the Swiftfoot Boots and they still get to Breon, uh, we can simply cast it and get on Worm Coil Engine and kind of throw it to our opponent. So we should be able to close this one out. All right, opponent does scoop it up. That was a nice little swing in right there. And good play by our opponent with that Volcanic Fallout. But really, uh, yeah, that's a bummer, man. That's uh, It always stinks when you get lanes in the hand. But, uh, but yeah, interesting deck by our opponent. And that's a nice little Breon WrestleMania match. So if you enjoyed the video, like and subscribe. Thanks. Bye.